Hi, Sergio. This is Mason from the Sports Sesh podcast. How are you doing today? Doing good, brother. How are you doing? Uh, I can't complain. You, I just wanted to ask, your brother Anthony has been a champion in a major organisation and obviously now you have the chance to do that also. Have you always had that in goal straight, straight from the get-go to be a major organisation world champion? Yeah, I feel like if you uh, come in the sport and you don't have the the goal to be a champion or you're just fighting for no reason, uh, I'm here to, uh, you know, obviously make a legacy for myself, build my name up and uh, get my belt, get some belts of my own. You know, my brother's got two already and yeah, I love when uh, I love one on my ways as well. Last thing from myself, you have fought some very tough guys already, such as Henry Cejudo and Brandon Moreno, to name a few. Having fought these tough guys, do you think this has, well, do you think this is going to give you an advantage in this fight? Um, I feel like that's the past. You know, it definitely taught me some things. But uh, you know, I'm fighting a new beast this this Friday. Juan Archuleta is a tough opponent. Twenty five and two, his record speaks for itself. Um, so. Um, you know, it's nothing different, man. I've been fighting, fighting good guys my whole life. And, you know, I just feel like nowadays I'm ready mentally, physically, spiritually, everything's aligned and I feel like the stars are aligned for me to go out there and be successful this Friday. Harry, go ahead. Hey, Sergio, Harry Mack from the bookie's basement. So we had talked to, good. Uh, so we had talked to Rafi on earlier about, uh, you know, what it means to him and how special it is for you guys to fight on a card together and kind of share this moment. So I just wanted to know what, what does it mean to you to share this, uh, you know, your world title shot with a guy like, uh, Rafi on who considers himself, uh, you know, basically a brother of yours. Yeah, man, it's been amazing. You know, me and Raf grew a lot together. Um, he's taught me a lot of things and I've taught him a lot of things as well. So it's been a gr uh, great, great camp for both of us. You know, um, our coach left for a couple of days for a PFL quarantine. So we kind of had to take things into our own hands and uh, take control of our future. So uh, it was great, man. He, he's a great wrestler, just like the opponent I'm fighting this Friday. So, uh, you know, I'm, I put some uh, different looks for him together for his opponent this Friday as well. So it's been awesome, man. It's been a blessing to work together. Got it. Well, thank you very much. Best of luck, Friday. Thank you, brother. Thank you. All right, Tony. Sergio, I hope, hope you're well. Um, I just wanted to get your thoughts on, given how big this card is, how, how, how does it feel as a, as a bantamweight to be headlining a card against you? You've historically had the, the heavyweights and light heavyweights really, really main event in cards. So the evolution of, of the smaller weight classes, I guess, you know, how does that feel to be in that weight class and get the, the respect that you guys deserve? Oh, it feels great, man. You know, uh, little guys need that respect too, man, you know. Um, but uh, it's it's awesome, man. It's a blessing. I've worked hard for this moment. This will be my 10th year fighting professionally. So um, it's crazy how fast time is flying and to, to headline such an amazing card for Bellator uh, to get to, you know, have a title fight as well. So it's uh, everything I could ask for. This is a blessing. All the best of the weekend. Thank you, brother. Thank you. All right, Sergio, go ahead. Sergio. Hi, Sergio. This is Sergio from Fighter Path MMA. How you doing? What's up, Sergio? How you doing, brother? <laughs> uh, doing, doing well. Great so, name. Great name. I know. Uh, we talked a little bit about uh, your brother, Anthony. Obviously, um, not a whole lot of sibling duos have been able to capture world titles. What would it mean to you to be able to you know, bring that title back home and, and share a mantle with your brother, Anthony? Oh, I'd be awesome, man. You know, This is uh, everything that I've dreamed of. I, I've wanted to get a title for myself and to have a brother who has two titles already, you know, it's that much more inspiring to go and get one for myself. Um, to bring one, bring one home back to Milwaukee, to my team. You know, I've been with my team for 14 years now. I started when I was 13. So coming up on 15 years, so pretty much more than half my life. It'd be awesome to get that belt for my coach, uh, my teammates at home, my family back at home and just for the Pettis legacy. And uh, one last one for me, you talked about your team. Obviously you have a teammate competing on this card as well with Rafi on Stotts. What does it mean to you to have him here sharing the experience with you going through weight cutting and all that stuff? Oh, it's awesome, man. It's always off. Uh, it's always awesome to not suffer alone, you know? <laughs> uh, so this weight cut, you know, we both are going to go through a, a little bit of a hell tonight, but you know, it's, it's all good. It's, it's been amazing. He's, he's got me ready for this fight. I got him ready for his fight and it's just been, it's been a great uh, duo, man. We've, we've gone far together and I'm excited to see uh, the future for both of us. Gareth. Good evening, Sergio from London. Gareth A. Davis here. How are you? Doing, brother. Doing good, brother. How are you doing? I'm very well, thank you. Um, we spoke to you the other day. I mean, you admitted that, well, not admitted, but you were quite plain about it, that it's probably the toughest fight of your career. Um, he's got great momentum at the moment. You are with one of my great, great favourites in MMA, in Duke Rufus, yeah, who's an extraordinary yes. human being. And I know he's been like a father to you. Without asking you your game plan, 
What's his game plan for you against Wainatu Latter? Um, you know what? Me and, me and Duke don't have game plans ever for fights, to be honest. We, uh, we go out there and re re react. You know, um, there's, there's fights where I had some game plans for myself and the fighter reacted so different. So, um, I kind of, kind of got away from that. I feel like I just go out there, react, you know, trust my instincts, trust myself, trust my body, trust, uh, that, you know, God, God is with me as well. So, um, this one's just the, the same thing, man. It's, uh, against a tougher opponent, you know, 25 and two Juan Archuleta, but same, same process. You know, I believe in my process. It's amazing to hear that. And you're basically saying then that, and I think that's what makes you such an exciting fighter, that the most important thing after controlling the nerves and doing all your training is just being present in the fight. 100%. Yeah, being present every day, man. Every day in the gym, every day in the fight, every day in my life. Um, you know, it's very important, you know, to, to be in the moment. I used to live in the past a lot or live too much in the future where I wouldn't be so focused on the present. I'd miss my present blessing. So... Yeah, man, I'm, I'm very, uh, very at the moment, very in the moment. We're all very excited. This is going to be an epic fight on Friday night. Thank you very much and the best of luck. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Santiago. Hi, Sergio. Greetings from Amsterdam and thank you for the time. Thank your, you. Thank your, you. Your Bellator debut was spectacular with one of the most violent finishes you'll ever see. I know that you have a lot of wins as a flyweight, but you look absolutely incredible at bantamweight. Can you feel that as well, Sergio, that this weight is so much healthier for your body and that you can give more action now during a fight? Yeah, 100%. You know, uh, fighting that flyweight, I felt a little fragile. Um, I'm pretty, pretty big for the flyweight division, walking on a little bit heavier too. And the older I get, the the more my body's uh, coming more manly, you know, I'm starting to not grow this way, but I'm growing sideways. So uh, um, I definitely feel like I'm, I'm a lot happier as a person, a lot happier as a fighter. And when you fight happy, you do a lot better. Why isn't your brother yet in Bellator? Does he just want to challenge himself for one year in the PFL and then make the jump to Bellator? Uh, Having the yeah, Pettis yeah. brothers both in Bellator would mean a lot to Scott Coker, I think. Oh, that'd be awesome. You know, I know Ant's got some goals over in the PFL right now and, uh, Things, uh, you know, he's got to figure out some things over there, and um, I'm, I'm excited for him to see uh, what happens for his future. And who knows, man, you might see him in Bellator. And it's got a lot of fight left in him. Good luck on fight night, sir. Thank you, brother. Appreciate it. Kachi, go ahead. Hi there, Sergio. Um, yeah, I'm a big fan of both you and your brother. I think your brother's probably my favorite fighter of all time. Awesome, awesome. <laughs> and um, yeah. I just, I just wanted to quickly ask you because um, you, you just mentioned that you feel a bit stronger um you feel a bit better at 135 um can you can you um explain you know what the difference is between you now and the version of you that fought brandon moreno because i know you went five rounds in that fight and this is also a five round fight like do you feel like um the extra 10 pounds um you know kind less weight is going to factor into your performance 100 percent. you know um there's the weight cuts are not as stuff on my body which uh it's helping my men's mentality a lot, honestly. Like I said, at, fly, at flyweight, I'd fight fragile. I'd go out there and the extra 10 pounds would do something to me. But um, like you said, I, you know, I got experience with a five round against a tough Brandon Moreno. Uh, on top of that, the elevation in Mexico City is like 7,000 feet. So definitely learned a lot from my flyweight career. You know, I learned a lot about discipline. I learned what it takes to fight at flyweight and uh, to compete with those guys at high levels. So I'm excited to see uh, all the stuff that I've been through in my career uh, show out this Friday. You know, it's a... Uh, it's been a little bit up and down, but, you know, I feel like I've learned a lot. Dylan, go ahead. Hey there, Sergio. Appreciate the time. Thank you, brother. Thank you. I'm just noticing per an older Instagram post of yours there, it seemed like, I mean, you were talking about the spiritual growth a bit earlier. Like you were talking about on the prior to the Mike Tyson show, there, just being in a dark spot mentally, back-to-back -back losses at the time, but just getting some really just great perspectives from Iron Mike there. I'm wondering how much of that moment there was a catalyst for the present wave of success you're riding. Yeah, man, uh, it was very important. Um, I mean, on top of that, the guy has some strong weed. I was in a whole different, whole different uh, <laughs> road at the time, you know. <laughs> um, but uh, just to, you know, just to hear, uh, you know, how you know when you think of Mike Tyson, you think of uh, this tough killer, and he is all that. But at the same time, he has a side of him that's a uh, very spiritual and very. Uh, very vulnerable, you know, and I feel like a lot of us hide from that. You know, we don't try to be as vulnerable just because of we're scared of judgments. We're scared of, you know, uh, social media coming at you and attacking you. But, you know, it just taught me that it's okay to be me. You know, it's okay to have these feelings that I was having. And it's okay to sometimes go through those dark times to see better times. And 
Um, you know, it's all just uh, uh, what you take from it, you know, the, the, from the lessons you learned throughout your life. You know, it could be negative stuff, but uh, I feel like a lot of stuff that I went through negative just taught me a lot of positive that I was able to take with me later on in life. And definitely uh, learned a lot on that, uh, on that Tyson podcast, man. It was a very spiritual moment. I was, I was high as hell, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you mentioned the high quality weed dynamic there. Are we expecting yeah, yeah. a fulfilled celebration here? Or is it hard to facilitate that in the bubble? Oh yeah, it's hard to definitely hard to facilitate that in the bubble, uh, <laughs> especially in Connecticut as well. So I don't know, I don't know the rules out here, but uh, yeah, man. Usually after the fights, I'm very relaxed. You know, I don't like to drink too much or smoke too much. I just uh, kind of take in the moment, let my body feel how it's supposed to feel. You know, it's a little little beat up. Um, so yeah, I feel like the older I got, the more I. Uh, just kind of relax with my lady and just uh, eat some good food. Simon? Hey, Sergio. Simon Romero with Behind the Grind. Uh, I have two for you here, but uh, the big question, something I can relate to is having a brother growing up. Uh, his name is Anthony as well, but... Uh, <laughs> oh, you know, you know. ...having similar interests. So talk us through what it's like having someone who truly is your best friend inside and outside of the cage. Uh, man, the, it's been amazing. Honestly, the, the things that I got to see with my brother have been amazing. You know, we've gotten to travel together, train together. Um, we got to lose together and win together as well. So it's, um, we've been through a lot of ups and downs together. Um, you know, when I was younger, me and him didn't get along so well. I was very, uh, very soft and very shy where Anthony was the opposite. You know, he was very confident, very outspoken. And, um, you know, he, uh, had to toughen me up and I'm glad, uh, he introduced me to the sport. You know, we were in Taekwondo together. I saw him make his way into MMA. I was about 13 at the time. He was uh, coaching my basketball team too. So, you know, it's a, it's a man of many talents. He was coaching my basketball team, had a stop to start his MMA career. And uh, I just uh, started, started training, man. It's kind of got me tougher. I remember my first practice holding pads for him and uh, he hit me in the stomach really hard and I started crying. I'm like, oh man, I need to toughen up. You know, I'm, I'm ready to be a, be a man, you know, a little bit tougher than who I was before. So it's been awesome, man. It's, uh, he's taught me so much in and, out, in and outside of the octagon. And the second question I have for you is his promotion debuts very soon. So how excited are you for that? Uh, yeah, it's, it's awesome. Uh, for the PFL, you're saying? Uh, his, his promotion coming out. Oh, soon. his promotion. Okay. Okay. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. His promotion. Um, yeah, I believe it's coming, uh, in November or September. Mm -hmm. Very excited to see that, you know, um, we made our way up in the promotions with Duke Rufus. So to have these fighters have an option to fight locally is awesome. It's been a while for, uh, some promotions in Milwaukee. So, it's about time. Ronald, go ahead. This is Ronald E. Smith. I'm getting real. Sergio, how you doing, man? Doing, doing good, man. How you doing? Blessed, man. Doing blessed. And, man, I, just for you, we, we could walk back a little bit. You brought up how this journey for you has been closer to over 10 years right now to get the title shot. So if you can, just reminisce for us. How could you look? How do you look back on yourself through the journey that you went on to now for the moment for now getting the towel shot? Yeah, man. Um, I feel like early on I was a little kid fighting men, you know, and uh, I learned a lot from that. So I feel like now I'm a man fighting another man, and uh, I'm I'm grown so much from who I used to be. You know, I used to fight a lot of fights, very insecure and very, very um, you know, not not really trusting myself. Honestly, I didn't I didn't trust my skill set. I didn't trust myself as an individual, as a person. And uh, now I'm my own man. I trust myself. I trust my process. I trust my journey. And I'm, I'm excited to go out there and see what I could do this Friday. Thank you very much, man. Thank you, brother. All right. One or two more here. Lenny? Uh, how's it going, Sergio? Lenny March from uh, Miami News here. I'm M. Mount Hinge. How's it going? It's going well, brother. How you doing? Yeah, I'm doing great. Thank you very much. Uh, first question is obviously, you know, your second name, Pettis. It's known throughout the MMA world with your brother. Uh, but you feel like as a, a title win this weekend, do you, f do you remember that? Do you feel like that could, you know, supplement your own legacy? Um, For sure. You know, obviously, um, I, I feel like I have built my own legacy. You know, uh, there's a lot of you know, the media it's saying, uh, you know, he's the little brother still, which I am. I'm always going to be Anthony's little brother. You know, he's got five, five or six and a half years on me regardless. So, um, you know, I, I feel like I, I feel like I have built my own legacy, and well, built this this uh, Friday would definitely build my own legacy. But you know, I'm, I'm not gonna stray away from that, man. We came in the sport together. Um, it's always gonna be Team Pettis for the rest of my life. 
Yeah, two more before I, I, I let you go. Uh, but you, you and your brother are on different paths, different organizations. You was in the same organization once upon a time. You both fought, you both fought in the UFC fight card together. Uh, but do you feel like before it's all said and done, before Anthony hangs it up, before maybe you hang it up, uh, that you would like to fight on one more card again with each other? Yeah, man, I, I would love to, honestly. It'd, it'd be a blessing. It, we've had so much fun fighting the cards before. Um, had sometimes they were rough, sometimes they were great. But, uh, you know, that's how life is. So uh, it would be awesome to definitely get uh, a couple more fights in with, with Big Bro. Uh, the last question is, uh, is probably one I did, probably didn't really want to ask is uh, talking about Anthony. Uh, I was wondering if you had any thoughts about his his debut at PFL. Yeah, man. Um, you know, it is what it is. It's, it's a sport. You know, it's uh, the sport and it's also the times in people's lives. You know, I felt like Clay was just, you know, he went out there hungry and, uh, you know, had something to prove. And, Anthony, you know, is a new organization. I know how it is to fight in a new organization when you're used to uh, fighting in one for such a while. It's a whole different environment, whole different process. On top of that, they have a 17-day quarantine, which is crazy to me personally. Um, you know, so you can't train with your people that you're usually training with for fights for 17 days. You got to sit out there and uh, get stuck in the bubble. So, you know, it's just times, man. It's, uh, you know, the COVID, COVID's crazy, but uh, it's just times. You know, I, I believe Anthony's going to make the adjustments and do well as the next fight. All right, Breeze. Hey, Sergio, it's Breeze with the MMA Breeze. I spoke with your opponent, Juan Archuleta, a few weeks ago, and he had uh, gave me his thoughts on you and your brother. He said you guys are both really cool dudes, and he wants nothing but the best for you other than this bout. Well, can you talk to me about yeah. the first time you, you met and inter interacted with Juan and uh, your feelings on him as a competitor and a person? Yeah, yeah, man. Uh, I met Juan my first fight coming into Bellator. I actually heard uh, rumors that that was going to be my first fight. Uh, coming into Bellator's Juan Archuleta. So, you know, I've been prepping to fight him for a while. I've been watching him for a while, too. You know, he's he's uh, 25 and 2. He's fought a couple of my teammates, done really well. Um, and at, anytime we interacted, it's always been love and respect, man. You know, we don't got no bad blood towards each other. Um, at the end of the day, this is business, and, you know, that's when things get interesting. But, uh, yeah, no, no bad blood, I believe, is a great competitor, a great great person. You know, he's a great father as well. And, uh, you know, no, 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 nothing bad about Juan. You know, just, just Friday, we both had bad intentions for each other, and there's a paycheck on the line, so that's what it and, is. And other than the paycheck, does revenge for your teammates motivate you at all in this bout? Ah, man, it has to pass. I don't, I don't fight for anybody else besides myself, you know, so it's more for me, more for um, my legacy and my, my, uh, my, my um, Ws, man. I'm hungry for these Ws. I don't like losing too much. All right, Sergio, appreciate the time, man. Good luck this week. Thank you.